Today, I have invited a friend of mine and a blessed brother in Christ, Brian Jones, to be in the studio with me as we are talking about winning strategies for this year. Hey, Brian, how are you? Brother, it is good to be here again awesome. to advance the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says, The path of the just is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day. The Bible is very clear. The path of the righteous, the path of the just, is like the light of dawn, Amen. getting brighter and brighter. So stop wishing that your tomorrow is going to get better. Wishing is not going to help you. If your today is like yesterday, you are stagnating. Today we are going to talk about what God has put in our hearts so that we break the stagnation mold and start moving to the purposes of God, the destiny God has for us. So <clears throat> as we are going into a new year, mm -hmm. a new season, you know, I felt in my heart to start to focus on how we can break the mold of stagnation. Yes. Many people's life today is the same as yesterday. Mm -hmm. December is same as November. 2023 is just the same as 2022. That's the curse of stagnation. Right. Everybody's trying to just stagnate and survive. But what does God saying to us? What is his purposes in our lives? Well, I'm sensing, brother, in this time, in this season, that with that stagnation that, mm. is, that we see in the lives of people, mm. it's because of fear. Mm. And fear has gripped them to a point mm. to where they do not know how to move forward. That's right. And it keeps mm. them in a place of incapacitation. They're just, mm. they don't know what to do. Mm. And so, therefore, as we are doing our very best to convey to the people of our church and the people of this podcast mm. that there's hope in the future. Amen. There's hope in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You know, many times we wish, I, I hear a lot of people, you know, say, uh, the best is yet to come. But two months down the line, yeah. nothing has really changed. No. So many of them are wishing Tomorrow gets better. Right. But does wishing help? <laughs> Wish, wishing doesn't help, friend. <laughs> what helps <laughs> is getting in the presence of Jesus. I agree. That's what helps. Amen. And so when we're looking to 2024 and mm. we've been talking about vision, what does that vision look like? Mm. What does it look like for the people in which that are part of our church? That's right. And that is just, we've been doing our very best to help them and to help us as a congregation mm. to just find a way to get into the presence of the Lord. Amen. To be still and know that mm. I am God. Amen. And in that stillness, that's mm. when we know and mm. hear the voice of God in such a way to give us a future, a vision of what is to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it is, it is very interesting, you know, as we were talking, as you're talking about entering the presence of God and he talks to us, you know, I am reminded of a tribe in Israel called the sons of Issachar. Yes. Sons of Issachar. And, you know, the Bible very, very beautifully says about the sons of Issachar in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The sons of Issachar had two things that they had a speciality about. There were many tribes of Israel. Some were skilled in bow. Some were skilled warriors. Some knew how to take the sword and fight the battle. But there was uniqueness about the sons of Issachar. 
He doesn't talk about that they were skilled in weaponry. Right. But they had some amazing gifts, talents, skills God had given them. And the first thing the Bible says is that they had understanding of the times. And they knew what Israel ought to do. Right. Yeah. So the importance of knowing what to do today will design your tomorrow. Absolutely. And that's that's something that I see, you know, as as a mortgage lender, being in the finance world. Mm-hmm. People come to me and they are asking questions, Lord. You know, hey, Brian, what do we do? What do mm. we do with our money? What do we do with real estate? Should we just hold back and not do anything until things change? Mm. Until the government changes? Until the uh, the presidential election changes? Mm-hmm. What am I going to do? Mm. You know, my consistent answer to them is, brother, mm. get in the presence of the Lord and ask Him. Amen. Amen. Isn't that the beautiful truth? You know, you said, you said very clearly that, you know, everybody's expecting the government to change so their lives can change. Mm -hmm. Now, somehow we have this mindset that we are victims of our surroundings. Right. Yeah. Now, is that, is that how the Bible portrays a believer? No, that is not how the Bible portrays a believer. And when we talk about the tribe of Iskar, mm. you know, for the, them being a people that uh, understood the times in which we were, they were in, mm. it, is that not where we are today? That's okay? right. We need to understand the times greater than ever. Mm. And I think for so long in America, we kind of felt like the blessing of God was on us to the degree where we didn't have to do a whole lot. That's right. That we were just kind of, you know, uh, the, the anointed class of people. Mm. And, but those days of being casual with Christ Jesus are long gone. Mm. You can't be casual with the Lord. And to know what's going to take place over this next months and years to come, brother, we have to learn to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And when we're in the presence of the Lord, he's going to give us understanding of the time. Amen. He's going to give us a clear direction as to mm. what we are to do, mm. whether it be in financing, whether it be in political systems, whether mm. it be under the school systems, in mm. your marriage, in your family, whatever it might be. Mm. It is our responsibility to know the signs and times we're in. Amen. Amen. Is it that is that is very, very, very beautiful. The word understanding the times, understanding in uh, the Hebrew also can be translated discernment. Right. Yes. Discerning Mm -hmm. the time. So so help us. Let's talk a little bit dialogue about what is discernment? You know, friend, uh, my mother used to tell me as a child, she said, son, I, I, I've prayed over you boys, mm. and I have a sister also. So she prayed over us all the time that we mm. have wisdom. Mm. And, you know, I've always thought about the word wisdom. What mm. actually is it, you know? Mm. And the word dis- discernment and wisdom go hand in hand to me mm. because what it allows us to do is take the word of God. Mm. Because we can use this word as academia, right? That's we, right. We can just learn this book, but we don't have the wisdom of how to convey it or how to live it out. Apply it. What yes. does it do? It, it takes wisdom, ah. okay? It takes discernment mm. as to know how to take the word of God, mm. apply it to my situation so there's a guaranteed supernatural result. Amen. Okay? Amen. And so that's what I want. I want to be able to open up the word of God and say, Lord, show me that even though mm. we may be talking about the sons of Issachar, mm. How does the sons of Issachar apply to me today? Exactly. How how is that anointing that was on that group of 200 plus, (laughs) you know, a small group of people. That's right. Not even well known. That's right. How does that group of individuals, how Mm. does that anointing flow into my life? Amen. Especially in a time where we feel like we're the minority. That's right. And I'm talking spiritual minority. Exactly. 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 Isn't that the truth? They were a small tribe. They were. Yet they 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 what they had the command. They 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 were they were so respected mm-hmm. that their word was the brethren were at their command. That's how the Bible says. That's right. And they had such an authority, mm-hmm. but they were small. That's right. So many times we think authority is in numbers. Uh-huh. 
It's actually not just numbers because you can be small, yet you can be strong because you are connected with God. Boy, isn't that the truth? (laughs) Isn't that what we want to be, brother? That is right. Boy, if you're connected with God, you are the majority. Amen. You know, I want to, if I may, I I want to go back to verse 23 for just a moment because Mm -hmm. it says, now these were the numbers of the divisions that were equipped for war. That's right. Okay? Mm Mm-hmm. So in this anointing, it allows us to be equipped for war. Also. Amen. Mm-hmm. There's an equipping that is special mm-hmm. among the sons of Issachar. Mm-hmm. And, and, and why were they equipped for war? Because it says they uh, came to David at Hebron to turn the kingdom over. That's right. Mm-hmm. So that actually says to me also that they understood that where the political system was, that it was coming to an end. That's right. Okay, mm-hmm. so this anointing actually has the ability for us to discern the political shift of time. That's also. right. Mm-hmm. And then it goes on to say, according to the word of the Lord, which, brother, that, that blesses me right mm. now. Because nothing that we do should mm. be according to Sonny. That's according right. According to Brian. That's right. It should be according to... To the word, word of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. How Hallelujah. do we get to the word of the Lord, brother? That's right. The That's only right. way to do that is get in his presence. Amen. Get into his word, understand his word, mm-hmm. but how the, have the Holy Spirit speak to us on a regular basis. Mm. Therefore, we can discern what to do in the moment. So many people, you know, who have my colleagues in my profession, you know, they, they have come and they have seen the turmoil that's going on in the nations and the chaos in the world. And everybody are a little bit anxious mm-hmm. at this time. And <clears throat> they, they come and they all know, being, being believers connected to some form of Christianity, you know, they all know these are the last days. Right. These are the last days. But they ask the question, how do you live in this last days? How do you live in this last days? You know, that is the question I want to bring up now so we can we can say, now you how do we live in this last days? Brother, I simply occupy till he comes. Mm. So whatever God is speaking to me to do, I do it. Mm. Okay. I try my very best not to let the peripheral of the world take over my life. Amen. That I am isolated with my attention on Christ Jesus. And I'm always Mm. reminded of Peter. Mm. Peter being one who had the, you know, he had the the gumption, the gall to step out of the boat, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. But when he was looking at Jesus, he he wasn't looking at his surroundings. And I think that speaks so much to, it should speak a lot to us today. Amen. Especially in the church because... The wind and the waves are raging around us. Around us, correct. And if we keep our focus on Christ Jesus, Mm. nothing, it's going to allow the water underneath our feet to stay. Amen. Be our foundation, (laughs) right? Amen, amen, amen. And we're going to have a supernatural experience to walk above it all. That's right. Not beneath. That's right, that's right. You know, the, the, the thing that you said, was, uh, you know, we, we all are anticipating, you, you said that you would do business mm-hmm. till he comes. Mm-hmm. You know, many of the believers' mindset mm-hmm. is, Lord, when are you coming? Yeah. <laughs> it's an escapism right. mentality. Mm-hmm. Oh, we are going to get out of this place. We are going to get out of this place. And no, no wonder they are, we are not influencing mm-hmm. this world. So, so tell me about doing business till he comes. What does that mean to you? Brother, it's not just financial business. <laughs> I agree. Brother, it is spiritual. That's right. Okay. Mm. We can all look at the people around us and know the lives that are in trouble. Mm. And they need, they need somebody to speak life into them. Mm. And so I, I am not going to be so concerned about escaping this world as much as I am about the life that's sitting in front of me. Amen. And how I can bless and be a blessing mm. to you 
that mm. I may share the love of Jesus Christ, that you would come to know the risen Savior deeply. Mm. I'm not talking about, oh, the American way is I just believe in God that I'm That's there. right. I'm That's talking right. about an intimate relationship Hallelujah. with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Amen. as I am able to share the word of God with you, that you can have an experience in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm. Once a person has an experience in Christ mm. Jesus, no one, there's no one. nothing in this world that can Amen. take that away. Amen. 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 Doing business till he comes. You know, it's very interesting. As you were talking, I was rem reminded of this scripture. A thousand may fall at your right. Yes. Ten thousand at your left. Yes. But it will not come near you. Mm. No. You shall see the reward of the wicked. Yeah. No evil shall befall you. Right. Is, is there a way we can live that life? See, because we somehow feel like, oh, everything that's happening in the world is going to happen to the believer. Yeah. But I see in the scripture there is an exemption for a man and a woman and a family walking with God. That's right. Yeah. It was so interesting. Look at the life of Noah. Mm -hmm. He walked with God. And so he received grace from God. When the judgment came, Noah was exempted. That's right. He was in the ark. He sure was. He was floating over every wave and the wind and the destruction. Now, is that possible? It is possible, friend. <laughs> you know, Noah worked until the day that that dory was locked. Shut, behind, right, right, right. So you talked about occupying. That's we right. We talked about occupying until he comes mm -hmm. and uh, doing business until he comes. That's when right. we get a word from the Lord, we need to continue to press into that word mm. until the day the Lord shuts that work down. Amen. And so I truly believe that I, I would say, and I say this in humility, friend, but I literally looked at my 23-year-old daughter the other night, and I looked at her at dinner, and I said, can you believe how blessed we are? Amen. Can you believe over the years to see our family and how the hand of God has been upon our home? So, I truly believe that you can live above it all. I Amen. believe I'm experiencing it, brother. Amen. I'm confidently experiencing mm. the hand of the Lord in my life every day, mm. no matter what's going on around me. Amen. Amen. So, you are saying, never surrender to your surroundings. I never <laughs> surrender my, to my surroundings, friend. Hallelujah. Never get in. Because, okay, let's go back to the sons of Issachar again, mm -hmm. okay? And... The, the tribes of Manasseh. Mm. In that scripture, brother, mm. it's showing us that they were equipped for war. That's right. I think about David and David coming up to the battle lines. Mm. And I know we always talk about David, but, but what a young man. We're assuming he was 17 years old. He's, his assignment is to simply take cheese and cakes to his brothers. That's right. And he comes up to the battle line and he sees an abomination of God happening. Mm. The children of Israel are standing in fear in a time where they should be doing what? War. They should have been doing mm. war, brother. Mm. And a young man comes up and he sees mm. what's happening. Mm. And he says, this is out of alignment. Mm. This is an abomination to my God. Mm. And if you, my fellow Israelites, aren't going to do something about it, mm. I'm going to do something That's about right. it. That's right. That's right. And today... Goliath, I'm going to feed your head to the buzzards. Hallelujah. Brother, that's Hallelujah. called dominion. 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 You know the word, that is so beautiful. Literally, that's what the children of Issachar had. Dominion. Exactly. Over the wind mm -hmm. and the waves. Mm -hmm. Another man who had that is Jesus. Amen. He had dominion over the wind and the waves. Amen. The wind did not stop coming, but it came, but it surrendered it to the dominion of Jesus. Boy. Isn't that a powerful picture yes. of how we live Amen. today? Amen. 
Amen. You know, the Bible says these are perilous times. But my question as we continue this is how can we live this life of dominion? Give me one or two important things that you do so that you can experience this dominion of God. Brother, I confess the word of God over my life mm. on a consistent basis. Mm. I take the word of God and I mm. apply it to my situation. So <clears throat> you'll remember these words that God gave me years ago. He gave me word, revelation, application, result. Mm. We read the word of God that we may apply it to our situation. Mm. Once we have the applied word of God, it has now become revealed to us. Mm. Once we have the revealed word of God, then we can take that revealed word of God and apply it to our situation mm. so that there is a supernatural result in the end. Mm -hmm. So you say you, you speak the word. Mm -hmm. Why should you speak the word? Well, because... I go back to God in the garden with Adam. Amen. Mm. And he's teaching him to speak the word. Mm. He's teaching Adam to be like him. Mm. He is made in God's image and God spoke the world into order. He confessed this world into order. Amen. And so therefore, if I want to reflect the nature of my God, then I'm going to do the very same thing over my life. Speaking mm -hmm. the word of God. It's very interesting in Genesis when God created he said let there be light let there be light and there was light yes it's very interesting uh, Brian you know most of the time when people come and you know they talk they speak they speak about what is going on in their life right the Bible says the earth was dark and without form. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. God did not speak what was on the earth, right. <laughs> but he spoke what should happen. Correct. Isn't that powerful? It's very powerful, brother. And it's how we should live our lives. <sighs> but we have to train each other to live that. There you go. We haven't been trained properly. That's right. But now we're in a new dispensation of time, a time where we know that the authority of God it has to come out of our mouth. Mm. The, the, the determining where we are in our lives and what's happening around us, we have to be able to speak the authority of the word mm. that that authority may influence the supernatural realm. That's right. Okay. There's an influence in That's the right. realm of the spirit mm. that has to take place mm. through the confessing of our word. Confession of our word. So when you say we speak the word, we speak the word. How long do you think you need to speak the word? Until I see the result. <laughs> Until I see the manifestation of the result. So I can't put a time frame on it. There you you go. know, sometimes I speak the word over my life. And mm. can I tell you a very simple? Mm -hmm. Brother, you know, I, I lost a controller at my house mm. in my back field mm. uh, 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 for some dog collars because you know I train mm. dogs. And this controller was lost in my field. I knew when I put it in my pocket, the Holy Spirit said, you need to put that around your neck. Mm. I lost it in the field, and now I'm in a place of regret. Mm. So I began to command the angels to bring my controller back. <laughs> this just happened four months ago. The next morning I wake up, I walk out of my gate, and I started thanking the Lord because the Word of God says when we pray, pray believing that we have received, received it. Mm. And I said, Lord, thank you, dear God, for bringing my controller back. Mm. I took three steps. And eight more steps in front of me, I was looking at my controller. Amen. Because the angels repositioned that controller. I lost it out in the field, but they put it in front of me. That Amen. I find. So now you ask me the question, <laughs> how long do you confess? I take the word of God and I apply it to my situation mm. so there becomes a supernatural result. Amen. And I'm going to do it until I see the manifestation of my controller come back. Mm. I'm going to see the manifestation until I see my child come back. Amen. I'm going to see a manifestation, right? I want that manifestation, so I'm going to keep speaking it. Amen. And so we have a tendency. The word of God tells us, be not weary. Mm. Do not be weary in well-doing, well -doing. but in due season, Amen. you shall reap if you faint not. That's right. So what's my responsibility? Mm. Don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. <laughs> Stay 
stay strong. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So speaking the word is very crucial mm -hmm. in living this life. Amen. So what word should we speak? The word of God. <laughs> that's very simple. You said it clearly. But that's the question. People are going to, what word should I speak? Should I speak Sonny's word, Brian's word? Should I speak the word of God? What word from God, from the Bible should I take? Yes. Well, brother, that's the beauty of studying the word. That's right. It's mm. the beauty of extracting the promises of the word. There you go. For you. Mm. And so I love the fact that God's given us preachers. Mm. He's given us teachers. Right. Right. I love the fact that we're honored enough to be in that capacity. Right. But the reality is an individual needs their own word from God. There you go. And once mm. they have their own word from God, mm. then they can take that word. Hallelujah. And they can confess that word over their life to a point where they're going to hold on to it and say, God, Amen. I am returning your word unto you that is not mm. returned void. Amen. It is not returned unto you Amen. void, Lord. So therefore, Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. I'm expecting you, Daddy, Amen. who is a good daddy. Amen. You will not give me a Amen. stone. That's oh, right. God. Amen. And I'm expecting, Daddy, mm. for this promise to be revealed in my life Amen. and manifested Amen. in my situation. You know, it's so beautiful. We are coming back to the intimacy That's right. component Amen. of a Christian life. Ah. And I feel that is the greatest truth mm -hmm. I learned in this year mm -hmm. is intimacy with God. Yes. Yes, I was a believer. Yes, I was anointed. Yes, I've seen demons cast out right. in our ministry. I've seen, you know, healings take place. I've seen the dead come back to life. Mm -hmm. Many times we get caught up in these spectacular things. Right. And we miss the central component is intimacy with That's God. Right. That's right. Draw near to me. Amen. And I will draw near to you. Boy, amen. You know, my friend, you know, in this time, this season, there'll be a lot of people out there prophesying how 24 is going to be. Right. But let me tell one thing in my heart. Mm -hmm. The only thing I am is not going to look for prophecy. I'm going to look for his presence. Amen. Because that is what is going to keep me over the storm. Right. Walking on water. Amen. Draw close to me. Yes. And I will draw close to you. So quickly in the last few minutes that we have, mm -hmm. what are the things that you do to keep and maintain this intimacy yes. with God. Brother, um, I get up when God speaks to me early morning. Mm. If it's 245, I start speaking to him. Amen. I'm in a point in my life where I stop fighting the sleep. Mm. I prefer his presence mm. and the intimacy with the Father more so than my physical rest. Mm. And here's what I find. Mm. He sustains me through my day no matter what. Amen. And in fact, I have a greater level of, level of energy mm. because I have spent more intimate time with him Amen. than the things of this world. So you're saying your prayer life is the key. My prayer life is the key, brother. Amen. <laughs> it Amen. is the key. Amen. Yes. Amen. What else would you do in, in, along with your prayer life? Is there anything else that you say, hey, that is also very significant in maintaining my intimacy? Well, I think of the scripture in First Thessalonians 5.17. It says, pray without ceasing. Mm. So along with that, there's, there's the daily meditation. Okay? Mm. I'm in constant meditation. Mm. And I'm actually asking the Lord at segments of my day, Lord, what? I'm inquiring of him, okay? Mm. 
A mm. great relationship between a husband and wife is when they inquire of each other, right? Mm. Mm. How much greater is it when you inquire of the creator of the universe? That's right. That's right. And so in the inception of this conversation, we talked about, you know, the financial and, and the physical. Uh, if I'm inquiring of the Lord in every facet of my life throughout my day, mm. then what I know what's going to happen is I'm going to have success in mm. every fabric of my life. Amen. Amen. Provided I'm obedient to, that's right. to his voice. Right? That's right. That's and so right. that's what I'm searching for. Mm. And that creates an intimacy, not just from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., 4 a.m. to mm. 5 a.m., not just in an hour period. I think a lot of times people think that if I just spend this hour, then I can go do what I need to do for the rest of the day. <laughs> You're better off to spend 15 minutes with God and mm. inquire of him throughout the day. Throughout the day. Then you are to spend an hour and never mm. inquire of him ever again. Amen. Amen. That's another dimension of living. It is. It's not living by your carnal no. mindset. No. It's totally revolving around your relationship mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. To be carnally minded is death. Is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. Life and peace. Hmm. So, isn't that the amazing truth, my friend? I want to tell everyone who's listening today, there is a way that we can walk on water. Amen. There is a way we can calm the elements of this world. The wind can be calmed. The waters will be calm. There is a way Jesus has taught us the way. And my friend, the only way we can walk about the water is through your relationship mm. with Jesus. Amen. So I want to encourage every one of you I know you have a relationship with God. Otherwise, you won't even be watching this podcast. But I will challenge you. Draw closer to him. Mm, amen. Draw closer to him. Let the intimacy continue. Let your decisions be so influenced by your relationship with God. Then let me tell you, the waters and the waves will obey you. <laughs> Amen. So cheer up as we are concluding this podcast. God is with you. Yes. God is for you. Who can be against you? God loves you.